join him, we gather together.
mercifully grant that as your holy angels always serve and worship you in heaven, so by your appointment they may help and defend us here on earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Psalm 84. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My heart has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God.
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit.
your disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is betraying the human eyes. And they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying, and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum. And when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. For on the way, he, for on the way they had argued with one another, who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took the little child and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And who welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. This is the gospel of Christ.
exalt you. We declare, O oh God, that there is none like you. We have searched all over, found that there is none like you. And now, God, may your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God, hide us behind Calvary's middle cross. May I decrease now and cause your spirit to increase. Make us not only hearers of your word now, O God, but cause us to be doers. This is our prayer, and we pray it now in Jesus' name. Amen. amen and amen. Please be seated. I first and foremost take this opportunity to congratulate Father Kerry Xavier Marcel on accomplishing by the grace of God this particular milestone. If you were a priest, you would understand how significant one month is, one year is, four years are, seven years are, and by the grace of God, ten years. And so we congratulate Father Marcel and his family on the accomplishment of this milestone. I acknowledge the presence of the administrator who's with us, the presence of Lady Marcel who's with us this evening, Carrie's mother, and of course Carrie's wife, Candice, and his children. I ask you to keep them in your prayers because behind every good and faithful man is a good and faithful woman or women and a faithful family. So we congratulate his family as well. I know that we are still under orders, so I will not be before you long tonight. Words from the book of the prophet Malachi. Chapter 2 and verse 5. The prophet writes, My covenant was with him, and it was a covenant of life and well-being which I gave him. This called for reverence, and he revered me and stood in awe of my name. My covenant with him was a covenant of life and peace, which I gave him. This called for reverence, and he revered me and stood in awe of my name. I speak to you now in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Malachi chapter 2 begins burdened with the strong rebuke to those priests whose faith and witness had become nothing but hollow formalism. In other words, they had the form of godliness, but denied the very power of God himself. Their faith then was relegated to surface emotions and outward signs. They honored God with their lips, but they did not know God in their hearts. In the rebuke, God says, I will curse your blessing. The curse is symbolic of frustration and confusion that God will allow to accompany and dominate your life and ministry if we are not completely surrendered to him. You see, the curse from God would make the minister or the priest and render them unfit for the divine office and their service to the Lord. As we go into verse 5, our cardinal text for tonight, God lifts up the tribe of Levi, those who are called 
to act faithfully and minister the old covenant. And he recounts, as it were, his blessing upon them. A blessing that was made available to all who entered into covenant with God and a blessing that is available for us tonight. This blessing, brothers and sisters, was made available in the words that my covenant would be with him and this covenant was a covenant of life and the King James says, a peace. You see, God's covenant upon his servants, his priests, is a special covenant. It is one that is embodied by life itself. And this is important because the role of a priest in the Old Testament usually was to be surrounded by those who needed him the most. The role of a priest in this New Testament dispensation is still the same. It is a role that causes us to be surrounded by those who need us the most. Whether physically, psychologically, socio-economically, or spiritually. A priest is called to counsel. He is called to aid in the healing presence of God. And very important, he is called to bless. You see, in an environment of pain and suffering and death, this is so important. Because the priest acts as a symbol of hope, as a symbol of life, as a symbol of the reality that God has not left his people alone. That God is with us in the good times and the bad times. That God is with us in the highs and in the lows. That God is with us when things are up and when things are down. That God is with us when the FNM is in power and he is with us when the PLP is in power as well. That God is with us as we climb the mountains of our life. And God is with us in the valley. Yes, the God of the mountain is still the God of the valley. Yes, the God of the day is still the God of the night. You see, thus God says to Malachi that my covenant with him is one of life and one of peace. Because there are times we are surrounded by death. As priests, we can often feel like we are dying as well. But God says, my agreement is with you. God says, my plan is for you. God says, my will concerning you is life. I remind us tonight, brothers and sisters, that God calls all of us into ministry. That God calls all of us to be a part of this covenant. Father Marcel, I know your story. And unlike those who want to judge you without knowing your story, I know it. And I know that when you went to Codrington, it was hard. I know that when you had to go and go to Canada, to Wycliffe, it was hard as well. I know that when the time came for you to be ordained and you had to leave your home and go to another land to be received and accepted and ratified, it was hard. I know that coming back to this diocese, coming back home to a clerical culture that is cynical at best it is hard and I know that all of these experiences were meant to kill you but make no mistake only the Bible says trials come to make us strong but actually the truth is brothers and sisters trials come as we know the enemy comes to kill and to steal and to destroy but God says I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly and so yes there were trials that came to break you there were trials that came to shake you there were trials that came to discourage you and to sentence to death the hope and the dreams and the ambitions and aspirations that you've had but thank God that the enemy's plan did not prevail Amen. oh my God there ought to be five people tonight who can thank God that the enemy's plan in your life did not prevail 
You should not be here, but God was on your side. You should not be alive today, but God kept you. You should not be sitting in the pew tonight, but because God was with you every step of the way, He made your enemies your footstool. And everything that the enemy meant for bad, God turned it around. Oh, hallelujah be to God. He turned it around for your good. Uh, that's why somebody says, I am here today because he kept me. I'm alive today only because of his grace. Father Marcel, you are here tonight because who he keeps is there. I remind you that man did not bring you here. If it was up to man, it would be somewhere else. Let's be honest tonight. But God brought you right where you are. That's why all praise belongs to him. God says to Malachi, my covenant with him is one of life. It doesn't matter then, brothers and sisters, who wants you dead. God will cause you to live. It doesn't matter, brothers and sisters, who hates you. God still loves you. It doesn't matter, brothers and sisters, who plots your failure. God has already planned your success. Why? Because his covenant with you is life. Carry his covenant with you is life and peace. Now, peace is not only, brothers and sisters, a sense of calm. Uh, but peace, by the spiritual definition, is a temperament. It is a disposition. It is an attitude given to the believer by God. It is given to the believer to counteract and to contradict what it is you are facing and going through. Uh, if we are honest with ourselves tonight, we all know how life can be. But you see, when you belong to him, there are some things he will give to you. You see, when you belong to him, there are some things he will do for you. When you belong to him, there are some ways he will make for you. And when you belong to him, there are some things that will not make sense until God says it does. You see, peace means that God secures you from evil. That's why the psalmist declares, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You see, peace is how we as ministers of this glorious gospel get up Sunday after Sunday and minister at the altar. It is how we lift our hearts to him when it is so hard to lift our hands. It is how God fortifies and strengthens us day after day, week after week, month after month, and year after year. It is how after all the things that we have been through and are still going through, we still have joy. Amen. It is how we are able to preach life to you, even though death is breathing on our backs. It is because his covenant to us is life and peace. Brothers and sisters, his covenant to you as well is life and peace. And so it is a covenant that emboldens and empowers and strengthens us. So 10 years as a priest, Father Carey, is not only your celebration, it is a celebration of what God has done in and through your life. You see, God can only use the soldier he can trust. You see, when you surrender yourself to him, he will make something beautiful out of your life. I love the latter part of the text. This is what it says. It says, which I gave to him life and peace. This called for reverence. And he revered me and stood in awe of my name. The final part of this verse, brothers and sisters, 
lifts up for us the qualification or the agreement concerning the covenant that God made with the house or the tribe of Levi. Remember, my covenant is life and peace, but in order for you to access, in order for you to share in, in order for you to participate and be a part of this covenant and to benefit from the covenant, you must be reverent and stand in awe of my name. What does it mean to be reverent? Reverence by definition is a spiritual thing and it means a deep respect for God. You see, reverence is something that is felt inwardly and demonstrated outwardly. It means that what is happening on the inside must show up on the outside. It means that you cannot love God with your whole heart and mind and strength and soul and not love your neighbor hello somebody and not love your neighbor as you love yourself it means that you cannot work your best to destroy and pull down the ministry of the church and claim that you love the lord it means that you cannot backbite and gossip and talk and tear down and pull down one another. And then when you come to church, say the peace of the Lord be always with you. Why? Because what is on the inside must show up on the outside. This is what true reverence is about. And this true reverence is something that God calls us all to have the true reverence comes not by what we say but by what we do by how we live you see most people can readily accept God as Savior most people can say God I need you in my life most people can say God I, I, I am in need of your saving grace but we refuse God as our sovereign we refuse him as our ruler, as the one who is large and in charge, as the one who is in control and the one to whom we must submit. To be a priest, Father Marcel, means that you must not only accept God as your savior, you must receive him as your sovereign. It means that your life must be surrendered to him. Now guess what, that ain't just for Father tonight. That's for all of us. To receive God as your Savior, you must accept Him as your Sovereign. And when you accept Him as your Sovereign, it means that your life is surrendered to Him. This calls for reverence. In order to be a part of the covenant, in order to receive what God has in store for us, we must revere Him with our lives. And how do we revere him with our lives? We surrender ourselves to him. We seek the transforming power of his grace. You cannot come to Jesus and still be the same. Amen. You should not serve on this altar and still be the same. You should not celebrate the sacrifice of the mass and still be the same. You should not lift up your hands in worship and in adoration and still be the same. You should not come to this chancel to receive the Holy Communion and still be the same. You should not lift up your hands in worship and still be the same. There is a change that must take place in your life. It means that there are some things you must let down. Yes. As priests, we learn the art of sacrifice. We learn that God calls us to cut some things loose and let some things down. Yes. Father Marcel, you have embodied this sacrificial service. You have embodied what it means to turn your life around. You have embodied what it means to honor God not only with your lips, but in your heart. Amen. Now let's make it clear, none of us are perfect. No. I'm not saying that Father is, I'm not saying that I am, I'm not saying that you are. But we can tell the difference between those who are striving 
for perfection and those who don't care at all. The challenge of our lives, brothers and sisters, is to seek the transforming grace of God every day of our lives. I remind people that altar calls are not something that happen once a year or once a week or once a month, but the altar call takes place in our hearts every day. Every day we must get up and say, I refuse to go back to where I have been. Every day we must get up and say, I refuse to continue in hate and unforgiveness and animosity. Every day we must get up and say, I surrender my heart and my life to God. And this day I will live better than I lived yesterday. Amen. Father, I believe this is what you have done. And I believe that this is what you are doing. And because of that, the covenant of God's grace to you is life and peace. The final part says, not only did he revere me, but he stood in awe of my name. Whenever you hear the name of God mentioned in scripture, it is not talking about simply the title of God. It is speaking of the character of God. To stand in awe of the character of God means that you are seeking to become more and more like Him every day. Father Master, we thank you for seeking to become more and more like God every day. Now we know all days are not the same. Some days you will pass. Some days you will fail. Some days you will do well. And some days you will fall apart. But here is the glory of the Christian. Every day you get up and you keep on pressing. The fact that you have made it 10 years, my brother, meant that no, not every day was good. Not every day was happy. Not every day was glorious. But you got up every day and you kept on pressing. We thank you for pressing. We thank you for loving. We thank you for serving. We thank you for worshiping. We thank you for sacrificing. We thank you for giving your all to the service of God. Amen. You have been a good example. I don't care what they say. Amen. You have been a good example to us. And you have reminded us what it means to give our best to the Lord. And when you have done the best of your service, telling the world that the Savior, hallelujah, has come. Be not dismayed when men don't believe you, when they laugh at you, when they tell you go from here, when they talk about you, when they malign your character, when they speak all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. He will understand and say. Father, to 10 years, we say, well done. In his name, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.
in this moment, come and pray for Father Marcel as we pray for his wife and children, his mother, his entire family. That's because we know that as he is engaged in ministry, they are by extension engaged in ministry as well. So I want you in this prayerful moment to look to God as you pray. Our Heavenly Father and our God, we have come to give you thanks. For we declare in this moment how great is our God. Great is your faithfulness. O oh Lord, unto us, unto Father Marcel. Father, as we come before you tonight, we present this man of God. We present this priest. We present this voice of reason and prayer and declaration. We first and foremost, God, thank you for the many gifts that you have given to him. We thank you, God, for the gifts that you have given to this parish through him. We thank you, O oh God, for the life that he has lived and the ministry that flows through his veins. And so, Father, right now we pray in the name of Jesus for an outpouring. We pray in Jesus' name for a refilling. We pray in Jesus' name for a refueling of his passion and his desire and his enthusiasm to serve you. We thank you, God, that he will not get weary of well-doing, but in due season he will reap if he does not fail. God, we thank you for the support that is around him. We thank you, God, for the support of his wife and his children. God, we ask your special blessing upon them. We thank you for the support of his mother and his other family members. We ask your special blessing upon them. And so, God, now we pray that your anointing may rest upon him afresh yet again. As on the day of ordination, may it so be today. And God, we thank you, God, that your spirit continues to be alive in him. Bless St. Paul's parish. Bless the vestry and the wardens. Bless all those who walk alongside him and minister with him. Bless the ministries and organizations because and through him. And we pray, God, that your will for him will be accomplished and that your kingdom will come in him and through him as it is in heaven. We thank you for this life. We thank you for this witness. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your power. And God, we say, have your way. This is our prayer. And since you bid us, seek your face. Believe your word and trust your grace. We cast on you our every care. And we wait for you to fulfill that which you have promised. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
we deceive ourselves that the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Devoutly kneeling, the kneelers that have been provided, let us therefore confess our sins to God. Together we confess, Almighty God, our Lord.
when we pray the prayer over the offerings. Father, we offer you this gift which you have given us, this bread, this wine, this money, to help you offer ourselves our lives to our world. We come through your Holy Spirit, the reason of the Holy and Christ to sacrifice. As the bread and wine become the glory of Christ, so may your Lord and Lord become shadows of the Lord. To the same Christ our Lord. Amen.
gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance. If you 
this holy sacrament, preserve your body and your soul to have a lasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing to him as a communion before Christ died.
a special effort to come out tonight. Thank you. I want to acknowledge the presence of the administrator, Ms. Desiree Ferguson, the district education officer, I want to say superintendent, district education officer, Ms. Melinda Pratt. I would like to acknowledge the presence of my principal, Mr. Endel Adley, the principal of MGM Major High School. I would like to acknowledge the presence of my priest one, the ever faithful, ever sure, Christopher Knowles. And I want to acknowledge the presence of Father Philip Peel, who is the vicar of the North. Right on. And I never thought an island could look good when you have Two points and one. a vicar of the North who handsome and a vicar of the South who yes. Then I want to welcome to our parish someone who is a dear friend of mine, who said in his own sermon, he knows my story. And I appreciate that he was one of the brethren who took the time to know the story. Ethan has always been an encouraging voice, a correcting voice. Don't take love to row. My Lord. Yours will be happy. Because <laughs> love to row. You would not want to find a better man of God than Ethan Ferguson. And I don't want us to take his presence for granted. Ethan came all the way from Tennessee and left his wife and his child behind to be here with us tonight. Let's give God a person. So to Lady Ferguson, I am putting him on the plane in the morning, man. So if you ain't there from he here, <laughs> praise the Lord. So we hope little Zai is doing well. Zai, Daddy is on his way home soon. All right. Uh, we also want to give glory and honor to God for someone. I got plenty of special people, but this person is special of the special of the special. To the woman who gave me life. Yeah. Uh, to the one and the only. Because there are only two Marcells in the back. Well, there are three now. Well, there are five now. I gotta remember that. There are five now, but the original, the original homemade Marcel. I would like us to welcome my mother, Agatha Marcel. And then I would like to say a special thank you to my wife. Candace supports me, she encourages me. She's around me too. Uh, she also encourages me to rest. And why you have to go? And they may not come. And I say to her, if any place you see, I hope it will be in heaven. So there's work that I have to do. So thank you for allowing me to do my work. To the glory of God. And then I want to say, I can't miss anybody since I started today. We would like to thank Mr. Scriven for his professional photographerism. <laughs> I tell him so. Mr. Scriven, thank you. I appreciate you. We want to say a special welcome and thank you to someone who has been here before who came here live in Long Island. William Mortimer of William Mortimer's Photography. Let's give William a round of applause. So we got all kinds of cameras tonight. So if you shame on me, more than likely you want to internet by now. All right. Then I want to say a special welcome to the melodious music that you heard tonight came from no other than Mr. David Ramming. And of course, it goes without saying I want to welcome my friends. And if I wasn't any of them, I would have been one of y'all in a heartbeat. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So, I want to say a special welcome to my other pastor, Pastor Devante Cooper, and the members of the Church of God in the Bible. Yeah. Oh, it's a mixture. But, but all of us from the Church of God, the prophecy, oh, and the Baptist, oh, that's right, and the Baptist, the drummer from the Baptist Church. That's right. Hey, my friend. We also have my friends. Welcome.
run off and bump into somebody. You could stand still and enjoy yourself in your own little corner. You and your small corner, and I in mine. All right. So permit me, please, just five more minutes for the other two persons to make presentations, and then we will go in peace. Shortly. 
And to the children, we welcome you. We love you. And one coming or leaving. That's, that's how I was some time ago. Um, they never hurt nobody. Um, and if, he, if he's attracted to the altar, then you may end up with him sitting in one of these chairs one day. So don't discourage him. Suffer them to come to Jesus. Um, are you alright? Alright, so Ronaldo, we love you, thank you. And I also leave you, he can't take you, but I leave you in his hands. If you need a good friend, Father Phil is one of the best that I know. So don't give him my discount now. I think you all that. You know, don't, don't do that. But and, and if and if he doesn't know, Ronaldo is the top salad man in the world. So when you're looking for something to respond, right, comfy kind of comfy. Silly answer. All right. All right. Friends, countrymen, my fellow behaviors, please stand for this. this uh, one minute. Sorry. Sorry. Sit. Sit. Sorry. This, this one has sprung upon me, but I must. Oh, my Lord. I would like to say thanks to Tiffany. Uh, my most excellent parish administrator. Let's give her a round of applause. Jesus' name.